And we're now entering the last session for today. The topic for the last session of day one of Thailand Focus 2016, Public and Private Collaborative Projects, A New Sustainable Growth Path. Our panelists include today Mr. Itzala Wongkusongkit, Chairman, Thai Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Isra is also a member of National Legislative Assembly, as well as head of private sectors in public and private collaborative committees. And the next panelist, Mr. Gan Dragun Hun, Director and Chairman of the Management Advisory Committee, the Siam Cement Public Company Limited. He had been actively involved with the government sectors in the drive to reform and restore Thailand's economic stability ever since. And this panel will be moderated by Dr. Gopsak Putragoon, Vice Minister for Office of the Prime Minister. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome all the panelists and moderator on the stage. So while we're waiting for the panelists and the moderator to be on the stage discussing public and private collaborative projects and also a new sustainable growth. Uh, I emphasize once again, the panelists for this session will be Mr. Isala Wong Kuson Kit, Chairman, Thai Chamber of Commerce, and also a member of National Legislative Assembly and as well as head of private sectors in public and private collaborative committee. And also Mr. Gan Dragun Hun, Director and Chairman of Management Advisory Committee, the Siam Seaman Public Company Limited. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank uh, the Stock Exchange of Thailand, Patra, and Bank of America, Merlin Lynch, for inviting me to be here to be the moderator of the sessions. I think the question that investors have in their mind is that how can Thailand move forward? How can we reform ourselves? I think that is the main question that they have about Thailand. Basically, Thailand has been staying still for the last 10 years when our neighbor moved forward. And you can see that Vietnam is catching up Malaysia is moving away, China is moving away from Thailand. And you would like to know, what can Thailand do to change ourselves and then catch up with other countries again? I think this is the main question for these sessions. And very lucky that over the past year, the government have been working on the project called the Public-Private People Partnership. I think this is called PPPP, for P, not PPP. And these projects, or initiative is one of the most important projects by the government. It has been driven by um, the Prime Minister himself and also Dr. Sumkit. And this is the project where we provide a framework where the private sector is working with the people under the sponsorship of the government. So the three parties come together and unleash the synergy between them. And we are so lucky today that we have these two outstanding speakers who don't need any introductions, um, Kun Isra and Kun Gan, who are the main driver of this initiative. So basically, I would like to take this opportunity to talk about what we have done about these projects and how it's relevant for the investor and how it's relevant for Thailand. So I would like to break off the session into three rounds. Um, at first, I will ask Kun Isra about the overall projects because Kun Isra is the chairman of the whole PPPP um, projects. And then um, I will turn to Kun Gan about innovation, which is one of his group that he is leading. So basically, um, this is the questions about how can Thailand foster new innovation? How can we move forward in terms of um, startup and in terms of um, um, innovative activities, productivities? And then in the second round, I come back to Kun uh, Isra again, and I will ask him about um, the group that he has been leading, which is the advanced agriculture or agriculture reform. 
and then um, I will turn again to Kungan on the questions of the legal and regulation reform, which is dear to the heart of all the investors. And in the third round, if we have time, I will open up the floor so that everyone in this room can ask the speaker questions, where you can send me note, or if you don't ask the questions, I ask myself. So don't worry. Um, I don't know which one is harder, <laughs> but I think it should be okay. So without um, any delay, given limited time, let me begin um, with Kun Isra, please, on the question of um, the overall initiative.
30 they appear 30 40 businessmen come along and then they pledge their help to work together with the government so the pm quite happy that day and then that is the beginning of a long journey that we have been working together for the last eight months and i think a lot of the result is very interesting because the private sector know the solution they know the demand and they know how to use the private sector solution to solve this public problem and in fact i think um, at the end it's also come back and then help improve the overall economy and over the past eight months i can report to you um, that um, they have been working very hard in fact as hard as working for their company um, on these projects or he said more <laughs> which is good for thailand so let me show you the first case, the group on innovations and productivity improvement, um, what has been the result. Please, Kun Gan, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kopsak. I, I would say, okay, this kind of uh, setting is quite unique, okay. Uh, I think, okay, on, on the stage, uh, the, the people are very active, okay. So I would say I work very hard. After my retirement, I don't expect my retirement is life is like this. Okay, uh, maybe I'm. Someone said that okay, Kun Gan, you are stupid. Really, you know, because. And okay, I don't want to talk much. We are complaining, okay? But but really, it is uh, we have seen a lot of commitment, contribution from all, almost everybody that have I have known in the past uh, 10, 15 years. Okay. So the first group, I, I try to be very brief in order that we can have more uh, discussion later on. Okay, this is the first, uh, I would say this is the very, very first uh, uh, steering committee to be established, okay, uh, during the discussion. So Dr. Pichet, okay, which is a Minister of Science and Technology, is my counterpart. So actually, at the beginning, we, we talked, okay, in the way that uh, the, this is a private sector-led committee. But I, 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 I would not agree, okay? It should be equally, okay? Co-share by the minister and the private sector leaders. All right, so, so this is the work, okay? Actually, I have uh, presented this uh, somewhat, okay? So uh, in the Innovation and Productivity Improvement Committee, what are the implemented, okay? I also joined the another committee shared by the Prime Minister on the Innovation uh, of the Nation Committee, all right? So, really quick, okay, this government approved a lot of measures to, to support and promote uh, innovation, especially on, on the tax uh, credit, all right? From 200 to 300 percent. And the way to get the tax return is easier. In the old day, when you apply for the tax return, the Revenue Department will come to check even more, okay, in your accounting system, okay, in your book, but no, now, okay, this is the agreement, all right? I believe uh, the department will, will change, okay, the, 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 the way of uh, uh, checking. The, the public procurement for innovation, in Thai we call Manchi Nawatakam, okay? So this is the first time the government will agree to buy uh, innovative products from uh, private sectors, okay, in order to increase the, the economic scale, okay, of the volume. And uh, the work integrated uh, learning uh, done already, this means that we can receive more and more uh, 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 master PhD uh, student to work in the private sector. And the last one, okay, the talent is very key issue, I give you the data later on. Okay, this is to release all the science, uh, technology, researchers, uh, uh, personnel from the public sector to work for the private sector. Okay. And many, many projects in progress and all, a lot of initiative. Okay. And, but I would say it's a quick to, to implement. All right. Next, this is the way we, uh, we try our best to uh, to promote, okay, in Thailand and also to, to solve any, any uh, problems. So the big corporation, okay, SME, 
and also the social enterprise. Later on, okay, we talk more and more on startup. Okay, this is the ecosystem for innovation in Thailand for the future. And very important is the government body. I would like to say that, okay, Dr. we just mentioned about the restructure of the government body. So I believe this is a key, that this is a, the, the, the job and the task for, for our, our team to, to tackle. Okay. R&D uh, expense still quite low, okay, but even uh, though in the recent years, okay, I believe right now the latest figure last year, uh, all you over 0.5% uh, of GDP, okay, and uh, only spending. And then how you see in the right hand side, the R&D personnel all together, the whole country, all level, okay, bachelor, bachelor, master, up to PhD, all together are about 70,000 people, of which more than 60% in the public sector, only 30 plus, okay, in the private sector. So we have to, to change, okay, the cost. But if you look into the top, okay, in the brain, PhD, the total in Thailand, PhD, only 10,000, 10,700. And among these 10,700, only 700 plus working in the private sector, only. So this is a must that we have to, to ask the government to release all these uh, researchers, technologies from the private sector to help the private sector. The new concept emerged, the R&D consortium. So this means that, okay, we, we set up the consortium, including many, many sectors, all right? Big firms, small firms, SMEs, uh, universities, uh, research uh, institute of the government to join hands, okay? To set the same objective, to work together in order to speed up everything, all right? So one example is the Singapore Aerospace Consortium. You can see that they can engage more than 70 companies in, in this aerospace industry, okay, consortium. All the competitors can come together, like Airbus, uh, uh, Bombardier, or uh, uh, Boeing. Okay, all the competitors can set the, the, the same objective, what to do, so you can create this kind of thing in Thailand. Okay. And a good example is the food in Nepal, again, that they talk later on. So the recommendation is to set the R&D consortium to support a new S-curve. Uh, for example, the robotics, uh, the aerospace, okay, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, airlines, Logistics, okay, MRO, everything. I just met, a, uh, you know, this morning, uh, the EEC, okay, presented to the Prime Minister. So, uh, sorry, many things confused, okay, in my mind at the moment, okay. So, a lot of new, okay, industry, okay, new S curve to be established uh, by R and D, and. We would like to have the open innovation to promote the uh, collaboration. Many, many firms can do it, okay? So, and another important uh, uh, new things to Thailand is the startup. We want to create a startup ecosystem, which the prime ministers, uh, the DPM, and all the, the finance ministers really, really engage in. in on this issue, okay? So we have a lot of event, okay? And, and this is a new engine of growth for the Thai uh, economy, all right? So last but not least, this is the concept of the overall uh, 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 organization structure, okay? That uh, for Thailand to be uh, restructured. This is a sample from Singapore. So we can see a very clear, okay, on the top of the, 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 the policy, 
uh, makers, okay, the funding uh, or the, the grant uh, uh, organization, the one who perform the R&D, and the one who use the R&D for the commercialization, for example. We like to have this kind of uh, uh, straightforward and effective and, and uh, very efficient uh, uh, organization. So I would say, okay, right now, the atmosphere for the innovation in Thailand, R&D spending, everything is uh, moving up in, in a good trend. All right, I'd like to, to thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kun Gan. Um, I'm happy to report to you that Kun Gan is working harder in retirement than he was working at SCG. That's what he told me. He has been part with maybe almost 20 committee. Or exactly, 15 committees. 15 committee. I mean, this is, has been a service to the country. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think he expect this before he retired. <laughs> so it's very lucky for Thailand that uh, we have Kun Gan agree to lead this task force because I think SCG is one of the most innovative company. And um, under Kun Gan, I remember that over the time, very short time period of 10 years, the HVA, the high value added um, product, improved from 3% to almost 40% of the total sale of SCG. And I think for Thailand, it's all under Kun Gan. And for Thailand to prosper, we need to start thinking and focusing about innovation. And that's exactly why over the past years, we have been working on a project such as Thailand Startup. This is, we bring along all the startup in Thailand and it's very lively. And in fact, a lot of momentum, a lot of um, energy in there. And at the same time, we also begin the project called Food Innopolis, which is also a consortium, um, working together from the public sector, private sector, and the universities. And we also change the rules. For example, um, the incentive for R&D. Now, it has been increasing from 300%. So basically, you can tax deduct. 300% of the expense you put into the research and development. And at the same time, um, the researcher, the teacher from university, they can work in the private sector now. That's exactly the model that um, SCG used. And we also set up um, the funding for startup and also SME. So all of this has been changing uh, in the right way um, to um, provide the right environment for Thailand to move toward innovation society later on. Now let me work, um, move on to Kun Isra one more time on the questions on um, agriculture sector and advanced agriculture. So this is exactly um, the topic that has been leading. So please, uh, please yes. share with the audience. Yes, thank you, uh, Dr. Kapsak. Uh, I think I, I will talk about the modern farm that I'm working with the Minister of uh, Agriculture, uh, General Chachai. Uh, you know how to how you have to get around with the general. Uh, so actually, <laughs> well, we work together well, very well, very well. well. Okay. Very well. <laughs> and um, the uh, when when we talk about the agriculture in Thailand, it's about we are concerning about the main crops. Main crop is uh, concerning about like rice, cassava. Mansampalang, uh, and then the sugarcane, palm, and rubber. Those are the main, including the uh, the uh, the top, uh, corn. Corn is also one of the base for the animal feed. And then uh, the other one is about concerning the livestock, which is poultry and pig. This is livestock, the small animal. Then we have the large animal is about dairy farm and the you know meat the the meat. Then we have the, uh, the, about the water and the sea and the fresh water. So uh, aquatic animal like shrimp, uh, sea bass, uh, tap, uh, talipia, pranin, pranin. So, so those are the, uh, the, the shrimp we have four, three kinds. Those, we have all the main players that come in and do all the research. But the last one that very important is the cash crop. Cash crop that the, the crop that people in the village can produce and sell every day, so they need cash. 
So rice only one time in the year before they can harvest. Very difficult. Sugar cane also have to wait for one year. In, in terms of sugar cane, most of the uh, sugar miller, they lend money to the grower between the years. So, so that's why the sugar cane crop is growing, you know, because it's... But uh, for, for ta- cassava also only about one year. So what, what we have to do to raise the income of those, we need to need, uh, 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 bring up the, uh, use the tech, new technology. So uh, with, with the modern technology that uh, including the digital and the uh, satellite, you can control some of the weather. Um, and, uh, we can control the temperature, control the uh, humidity, and also uh, uh, you have the research from the university to back up all this, all this uh, uh, area that uh, we, are, we are pushing for the uh, reform. So, but it's very difficult. We need to have a private sector to lead. Otherwise, the farmer uh, cannot, cannot initiate by themselves. There will be many, farm, many good farmers, uh, and a very good example one, but not enough to promote throughout the country. So in the Northeast alone, we have 70 mil, million rice of rice, and only have irrigated 10%. So the rest is very dry. So the, the, the idea is how to use the technology in terms to help to have extension service to help the, the farmer to grow better crops, reduce their, their cost. It's very easy to say, reduce your cost. But actually, the uh, increased productivity is the, main, is the main one. If you can increase productivity, then the, the price per unit go down. So I think, I think the uh, uh, precision farming also very important nowadays. You, have, you don't just grow a big, big uh, farm, but you, you can have a small farm, but very precise. You can get, uh, make more money. So, so this is what we concern. So we have all these main players, like on the uh, uh, cassava, on the main players, and uh, of, of course on the sugar cane, we have, uh, we have Midpon and we have other company. Rice, rice also we have to bring, uh, very difficult to get the uh, rice miller to do the contract farming because they never done before. So this is the, the, the most difficult. For, for poultry, poultry is, is, and, and pig is, is quite easy because you know, CP and uh, beta grow and those are the, the main one that can promote. Uh, and also on the livestock, uh, we get the uh, association of um, the, uh, what you call that, the buyers of dairy, dairy milk, milk. There's about large company, 17 of them. They come and help to do the research. The research and also to make uh, less bacteria uh, contained in the milk. And then the idea is that to get the, uh, to get the production of 10 liter per day per, per, per cow to up to 13 or 15. But in, in the modern country, they have up to 20 per, per, per liter per day, something like that. Okay. So the objective, objective is to reduce, to reduce inequality right? the between the agriculture sector and non, non-agriculture. Because agriculture sector have very, very uh, little income. So they cannot survive. And then we promote a smart farmer. So we have to have many good examples. We have to have the, uh, the research university to help, uh, to train. The young, the young one is more important. The young one can use technology, new technology. There are many young uh, people now go back to the farm and do the, uh, the, the veg- veg- vegetation farming and export. They can export directly from their hometown, from, from, uh, from Chiang Rai, from Chiang Mai, uh, from uh, uh, hopefully from Mae Hong Son also. Yeah. So, uh, and then we want to increase competitiveness. But in the short-term initiative that uh, we want to combine land plot, if we want to do mechanization, 
we have to bigger uh, have to have the bigger size of farm. Uh, rice farm in in the northeast size average about three to four rice per per owner per owner. So you just imagine the big machine go through. They take 40, 50 percent of time of turning the machine. So the efficiency and the management from one farm to another farm. Sometimes when the, the machine finish uh, harvesting this farm, they go another few kilometers away. It takes take time to mobilize the machine. So we have to plan for the bigger size to, to that they don't, but they don't, don't lose their, their, their right. So this is, uh, we need to have the uh, rice miller or the sugar cane miller to, to help the, the farmer. Uh, we want to strengthen the cooperation, uh, uh, cooperative to be more com competent. Cooperative, what we call the, the Sahakon. Actually now, we, um, they agree in principle now, we have to divide the, uh, um, the what you call the cooperative of agriculture and also credit union, you know, the, the deposit money. To, because they have huge amount of money that, uh, you know, deposit, so they have to separate. So I think in principle, uh, is working on the, the changing the, the actually the, uh, the, uh, the law on the cooperative. Uh, of course, we want to promote cash crop. But longer run, longer run, we need to have a breeding center. We have breeding and uh, research center that uh, can, can do the research the seed, all kind of seed for a small SME farmer. Otherwise, they have to buy very expensive seed. So uh, in the past, the government, the seed, the research center was um, combined into the rice, uh, rice seed. So, so um, they have no budget for the other, uh, like for the, for the mung bean, for, for the other beans. So I think we, we need to set up uh, uh, another center for that, yeah. And also, also we promote the uh, private sector to work to, because the government now give, uh, we can deduct 300% of what we spend for, for research and development. So we are trying to encourage all the uh, private sector to do the research with the university. Of course, we have to develop IT application for the farmer, which is, uh, we are thinking about using some drone also to get some information. We need the data for the, the, for the agriculture, working with the JISDA also, right? So you can see that we have done uh, already 43 large farm area, large farm area, including the uh, main crops and cash crop, uh, covering uh, 30 provinces, 30 provinces. So I, th I think, uh, ladies and gentlemen in this, in this room, if you are uh, capable of doing something, we are welcome all the time. So please join with us. And uh, also, I'd like to show you some example of pranin, you know, uh, tilapia fish, uh, which, and also the, uh, the shrimp uh, farm that uh, <coughs> the Thai, Thai uh, TUF actually, now with the chain to uh, Thai Union. Uh, the group uh, provide knowledge and technology of shrimp farming by, uh, by feeding together with uh, the fish and the shrimp in the same, in the same pond. So they, they feed the food because the shrimp and the fish, they stay in the uh, different layers. So, so after the shrimp, the fish take all, all the food. So uh, the, the, the income of farmer actually increased by fourfold all time, which is unbelievable. So the way of technology, the way of treating water, you know, fresh, uh, that, that um, protect the disease. So uh, this is in the, in the Prajinburi province, and we have seen that. And the most important is to buy fish at a guarantee price. This, this is a guarantee uh, uh, market. So, so another one is that uh, the CP group, uh, they go to uh, Kanchanaburi, uh, Kung Kaben. So they, they used to, let's say you have 100% you have of land 
and they use, they used to use, uh, use the land 80 percent for for breeding the the, the, the fish and the, the shrimp well they con they convert to use 80 percent for clay, uh, what uh, reduce uh, the, to 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 use for reserve pond so that the, the water will be clean when the water water is clean the, the, the to breed the, the fish and shrimp they grow faster so the the income grow by uh, uh, actually uh, double and this is the way that you know the technology help and uh, to uh, by the, the, the big big uh, company but also we want to do uh, the contract farming this technology when when it's success then other other village can learn from from each other so we want to promote other uh, uh, company to do the same and also for rice farming I give you one example that we have done a few uh, provinces already but this is one very good example one Jiameng Rong Si Fai Jiameng Rice Mill, uh, uh, Nontaburi. But uh, they have been doing the seed, rice seed in uh, Si Saket for, for quite some time. They have the rice mill there. I have been, actually, I have been asking them two and a half, three years ago to do the uh, contract farming for the rice to promote the rice farmer. So he refused. But last year he started. He got uh, 500 rice from, from last year. But this year he get seven, uh, 5,000. And also he has another uh, rice mill in uh, Ubon Rajatani. He will do the same. So the, you can see the cost of the, 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 the sown, sowing the paddy between uh, the traditional farmer to do on 3,000 baht per rice. But after he used the uh, mechanized and use the uh, technology. And um, so the price reduced to 2,398, 240. So this is only for the, uh, for the, um, for the growing, uh, for, 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 for sowing the, the rice. But when harvest, harvest, he expect the rice to get up to 600 kilo per rice instead of 450. So with, with right technology, with, uh, with the uh, attention of the farmer. So I think this year he will get probably 10,000 right to join. The, but he, he also, this is the guarantee quality. So in the market, the rice can sell up 9,000 baht per ton. He bought at 12,000. 12,000. 12, so, so because of the quality, cow home, you know. Is a jasmine rice, and it's not mixed with other variety. So, so he has his his own brand. So this is what we do. But also many provinces now we're trying to persuade the, the rice miller to, to do that. But uh, also the um, our our uh, network that uh, in the Pacharat include uh, the Lo Tesco Lotus, Macro, Seven Eleven, Top, and Big C. All of this, uh, uh, they buy. They will buy the uh, fruit and vegetation from the from the village, which pass quality already. So in the Thai Chamber of Commerce, we have one uh, uh, group of people to go and help them to, to make a quality. And even the the macro themselves, they have the people to go out and 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 help the people on the quality management. So the some of them pass through uh, GAP, uh, Global Gap, so that they can export. But if not pass GAP, we have the, what we call primary gap. Primary gap is that guarantee no chemical. So, so, so this is what we do. I think um, generally this, this is the, the uh, uh, ongoing uh, process. And I think we, every weekend we have a few group of people going through the provinces, including Kun Tapana, which is he's responsible for the Sadiqit Thanlak, you know, the, the, the grassroots, the grassroots uh, economy. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think many investors over the past 20 years has been complaining bitterly about Thailand that we have been stuck in the middle income trap. And I can tell you that Thailand never become an advanced country 
if we cannot solve the problem for the farmer. We cannot become high-income country if 20 million or 30 million of our people still have income of 2,000 baht per month. So that's exactly why we are fortunate to have Kun Gan to lead this task force on agricultural reform. And Mit Pon is one of the leader in the sugar business and have operation both in Thailand and worldwide and especially very large operation in China. And in fact, this is one of the most productive company that achieves zero waste. And in fact, I mean, he can still compete with Brazilian sugar, even though the currency of Brazil dropped by almost 70% and then um, still survive. So basically, it's telling you about how he emphasized on productivity improvement. And I think this is exactly the right way to go for Thailand. Instead of putting more and more money on price support or on the populist measures, we should move on to think about technology to help the farmer and then research-based um, development for agriculture. So that's exactly, I think, um, um, it will take Thailand very long way from now um, with his um, um, initiative and also his leadership. Now let me move on to Kun Gan once more time. Um, and before I um, go on on the third round, if you have questions for the two speakers, um, I would like to ask Kun Gan to uh, mention something about uh, recreation reform and um, the legal reform. Please, thank you. Please, thank you. Uh, okay, my group, okay, uh, Dr. Wisnu Klungam, our uh, deputy PM, okay, is my counterpart, all right? So, uh, I will move forward, all right? Okay, another one. So, I think we have the, 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 the task of the so-called the regulatory guillotine. Okay, it's one, all right? So give you some, some overview. Uh, the countries, uh, OECD, okay, in general, they have a law, roughly, okay, regulation altogether, I heard about 10,000 plus. But I just learned that in Thailand, we have almost 100,000, okay? For the license itself, the license, operation, any kind of license, OECD average, roughly about 300. But in Thailand in particular, we have 3,000. Okay, and all, most of them are outdated, inefficient laws, regulations. So uh, I think the key uh, uh, task okay, for the group is, if we can uh, scrap some of these laws, okay, and turn it and improve it, then I think we we can make the life easier for everybody. And of course, okay, according to the, the World Bank study, 10 to 15% of the GDP gone because of this uh, outdated, contradictory, and inconsistent and complex uh, regulations, right? So the, our target, okay, for, for us is only in three, uh, category competitiveness improvement, okay, ease of doing business, and finally efficiency. You may see that my presentation here very long, okay, a lot of uh, data written here. You got to be prepared in Thai first for everybody. So I think actually you you got it. No need to listen to me, okay. If you read, you understand clearly what's uh, going on. The priorities for the group, okay, uh, on top of the regular reform, we would like to finish five quick wins, five quick wins. And we have the subcommittee, the team, okay, and I also have to listen to all this uh, team. I believe next week, uh, Kun Surong, who, who lead another team, is coming to see me, all right? So, in this, okay, the five quick wins, Boss, okay, if we can uh, scrap the law, okay, we can. It's it, it the best, okay, but if not, we can improve it, all right? So we have some example, okay, of uh, like Korea. After 1997, 98, okay, 
they, they could scrap probably about 4,000 plus almost 5,000 from 10,000 or 48.8 percent, okay, and some improvement. In case of Vietnam, uh, it's a new country, new uh, kind of laws, okay, so they just scrap only 9 percent, okay, but they improved roughly about 70 plus percent of the law and okay, regulation. So in our case, okay, we like to do many things, okay, on the regulatory side and also on the, 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 the five quick wins. This is the, the five quick wins that we are aiming for. The first one, of course, you know, all the surveys by the Japanese Chamber of Commerce, uh, European Chamber of Commerce, American Chamber of Commerce, number one is a custom procedure. This is the pain, the pain, okay, for everybody. So the second one is the Food and Drug Administration, FDA. In order to, to get the permission, okay, the license, very, very long process. Everybody understand this, all right? The third one is the immigration. I just learned in Thailand, we have uh, only one level of immigration uh, for the people, okay? one level, from labor until professor, the same. Okay, so in this case, we could not get the good people to come to Thailand and stay longer. So we're gonna uh, tackle this problem, all right. We would like all the researchers, the top people stay in Thailand. And EIA, ESAA, and also the Taiwan country planning in Thai. This is a correct uh, uh, translation, okay? Pang Mueang, okay? Pang Mueang. Next, okay, the, for the regulatory reform, uh, the first step already done, the first phase. Kun Man Yong is here, okay, he is the main contributor for this, all right? So the private sector already contributed about $80,000, okay, to finance the first phase, okay, for the consulting company to come here. And right now we are moving to the second phase, okay. Uh, I believe that, okay, the process will require roughly about 12, 15 months for the life of this current government, all right, to, to fulfill what we really need, okay? And we can do it, all right? So next is the execution phase. This would require roughly only about 150, um, the most 200 million baht, million baht, okay? And, and we already talked to uh, Dr. Wisnu, okay, the team, okay, and this uh, uh, is going to the cabinet, okay, for uh, in approval and to set up the regulatory body, okay, the working team, the real working team to, to cut across all the laws and everything. On top of this, we have also another task, all right, because right now, you know, when I sit in, in this uh, uh, committee, in Thailand right now, any kind of problem, okay, any, any problem about the law in, or, or regulation, they, they come to me. And I have to listen over the phone, sometimes uh, Saturday, Sunday, you know, a lot of complaints. <laughs> so, so, okay. So this too is another example, okay. One is the Custom Act, okay. This is on top of the, the, the custom regulatory uh, 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 process, okay. And another one is antitrust. This is initiated by the government. I believe that this is important law, and they engage us quite well. Okay, so the team uh, gave our comments in order to to have this new antitrust law applicable and to to support. Okay, and and also to to benefit everybody, and in order to uh, bring Thailand to the forefront of uh, the region. This is the aspiration. After all this, I believe that we target ourselves, okay, for Thailand in 2018 to rank in the top 20 uh, for the ease of doing, doing business ranking. Currently, we, we are on uh, uh, the rank of 49, okay, almost 30. So I believe that everybody have to help me help us, okay, uh, in order to, to achieve this. I, okay, this is my 
final presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. So if we can change this law, it will change Thailand. I think um, a lot of the law that we are talking about, we have been using them for over 70 years. I mean, many laws in Thailand have been operating for 70 years. And most of the law has been outdated. Not even understand exactly the broadband, digital, and other things that has been happening um, at this present time. So basically, to change it, we will definitely set Thailand into a new foundation. Um, before I continue with um, the final round, um, I would like to ask the floor whether they have, um, you have any questions. Um, if you would like to ask, um, you can ask for microphone. Uh, if not, then um, I will um, take my liberty in asking these two uh, speakers myself. Please. Okay. So I will take my um, opportunity to ask um, the speaker two questions. And then I will, would like to ask both of them. I think for investors who are listening to what we have discussed all along, they, they will think this is good projects, good CSR. But for me, who investing the money into this company, Thai company, what it mean for my investment? I mean, how is it good for me as an investor? I would like to, to ask um, the speaker. And also for people who like the idea, like um, the PPP projects, they also have another question in their mind. Basically, um, this government already have very clear roadmap. In about a year and a half, there will be an elections. So there will be new government coming in. So how can we sustain these projects if it's very good for Thailand? How can we make sure that these projects can continue onward, even though this government has been um, left the scene already? Uh, please. Uh, the benefit, you said the first one. The first one, in, in, I think the um, benefit is that uh, uh, the example that I, I gave, uh, you know, like from the fish farm, from the shrimp farm, or the, uh, the, the, the livestock, or even in the sugar cane, I think the, that means the guarantee of supply, guarantee of supply that already, you know, you, if we can increase more and more, so we know exactly what kind of supply. Especially on the shrimp, we used to have the, the disease that uh, the shrimp die. So we used to export what, 600,000 ton. Now we only export uh, uh, less than 400,000 ton. So the, we need the uh, steady supply. So that when we have steady supply at the quality, good quality and the, and the controllable price, so that we can predict the market, we can compete in the world market. I think this is a, a stable, so sustainable is, a, and also the uh, community will be appreciate and uh, the, uh, the, the productivity, the, I think they will expand their investment when they make profit. So in, in terms of sugarcane that in, in my industry, so we, we help them not only, not only the uh, growing sugarcane, but all off season, we have the, the dig the pond uh, to keep water, and then around the, the pond, they can grow vegetation. They, they, they have fish, they have vegetation, so they can reduce their, their expenses, uh, family expenses. So I think they, they have, uh, every day they have food. So I think they are quite sustainable. And then uh, when this is an example of the co community, uh, the rice farmer now in the, in the highland, they're changing to grow uh, sugarcane more and more because there's a steady income. So I think uh, for, for sustainable, uh, we should look at the whole value chain, not only the farmer, uh, at, the, at the end, uh, end user, you know, like uh, our customer, is, uh, they use sugar to, to produce coffee, cake, or whatever ingredients. So, so I think, uh, I think it's, we have to think of all the way value chain. And also, when you produce the value chain, you can use all the waste, turn into money. Uh, we, we use the, uh, the uh, fiber to make our electricity to sell to the grid. And we use the waste of the molasses uh, to, to produce uh, uh, ethanol, so uh, to, to replace, to mix the fuel. So, 
So I think uh, uh, normally now waste can turn into the uh, if you have a steady supply, you have waste. In terms of uh, animal, animal also they have waste. They can turn waste into uh, uh, many, many, many things else. You know that into value. So I think we we cannot just throw it away. Yeah. So this is uh, number one, right? So number two, uh, if this government not not here, I I think we need people in this room because the listen the stock market, they have to join and. We, we, as a private sector, we have to do our job. I think we, we cannot base on government because uh, most of elect government has been lying to us for a long time. So, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I think it's true, you know, they give money away and then they don't build uh, competitiveness. There is no competitiveness in this country in the past 10 years. Just, we talk about it, but it never started. So I think it's, it's, it depends on the private sector. You cannot depend on the civil society. Yeah. You cannot do it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in, in fact, I think in the past, I remember um, during um, 20 years ago, I think at that time, Thailand is private sector lead economy. So basically, the private sector who are the one who um, push the economy forward with the public sector is helping, supporting the private sector. I think then we have changed. We changed to become the, um, the public sector lead. I mean, we are waiting for the public sector, what kind of investment you are going to do, and then um, we are waiting for them. And they never do anything for some time. So basically, um, we have been um, um, stagnant for, um, for the last 10 years. And I think this is a very good turn of event. I think now it's become the private sector and the public sector work hand in hand and then it's become more balanced in terms of um, how we push through the economy. And I think this is one of, um, um, of the key change that has been happening at this point in time for the Thai economy. Kun Khan, please the same two questions. Yes, uh, when I look into the PPPP, right, I believe this is the opportunity for Thailand as a whole, okay? Um, I have, okay, been helping the government, okay, in the past uh, six, seven, eight years, talk to many, many ministers, uh, ministers of uh, science, technology, at least six or seven of them. They change every, every year, okay, one person every year. Uh, many finance ministers. But really, okay, it, all the, the thinking, okay, the thought is not really put through, okay, in the same way as uh, when Kun, uh, Kun, Kun Isra said. So I think this is a, a good time, okay, this is a real opportunity that to engage with the private sectors, all right? I think in the past many years, private sector, okay, we have to fight almost alone, okay? Uh, in the, the, the global competition, all right? I fly, I flew 180 to 200 days a year outside Thailand, okay? Maybe it means that I don't work so much, all right? Just to see the opportunity, investment, something like that. But right now, okay, you see a great opportunity that we in, uh, engage each other, all right, uh, to see, to tackle the problem of the country together, all right. And, and I would say in the past uh, eight months, the easy one, the easy task, okay, that the private sector can do by ourselves, with our own money, all right, uh, resources, right, we already done, right, already implemented, okay. Uh, with the support by the government. Okay, now the, the, the second phase that we have to, to work together. So I believe all these uh, initiatives, okay, a lot of initiatives from uh, group, okay, 12 groups, uh, really help uh, Thailand into, in, in, in terms of competitiveness, ease of the business, uh, to reduce the disparity, wealth uh, distribution, everything, okay, on this. We discuss a lot. And we have seen one by one, uh, project by project implemented. We have no time to talk about education, the vocational study, which a lot of projects implemented. Right? So, so this uh, will benefit the, the country as a whole. And I believe this is the, the real sustainability. This will come back, the contribution, the return come back to the companies, the private sectors anyway. Okay, this is a long term uh, sustainability. Uh, sustainable development, right? And and 
for the longevity of the projects. I believe that if we can do a very, very good job, I believe the new government, any of them, will follow. Okay, I believe they will follow because uh, there's a pressure from the media, from the people that, okay, all these uh, projects, initiatives really benefit to, to the nation. So I believe they will do. But, you know, I, I, one more thing that I want to, to talk to you. I involved in, in the innovation, all right? Committee or commi many kind of committees, okay? In the past, uh, many years, I just learned, okay? The NASDA, NASDA, the National Science Technology Development As uh, Association of Thailand, okay? The, the biggest, uh, the top uh, research institute in Thailand, established after the coup. 23, 24 years ago. And 10 years ago, again, the National uh, Policy uh, uh, Committee, which I also, one of the member, also established after <laughs> uh, the coup 10 years ago, something like that. And this one, you know, uh, right after the May 22nd, two years ago, uh, the Prime Minister, uh, a prior committee, I was in that committee, and for the first time, for the very first time, that the Prime Minister is a real person, joined the meeting as a chairperson. I use the Thai word, Tua Pen Pen. Because I haven't seen any Prime Minister join, okay, and he reads through all the agenda thoroughly and in detail. And every meeting until now, you know, six, seven, eight, already, he chair the meeting every time. That's why we can move, okay? We can move a lot of uh, promotion, uh, uh, measures, everything, okay? Very quick, very, very quick. So, so I believe, okay, if we can do a good jobs, then even the new government will follow through with this. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. In, in fact, this morning, we just have a meeting with um, the PM. And last night, I sent him a big reading package. <laughs> and he read everything. So, so he worked very hard. And then, um, and then we have made very good progress on the project of um, Eastern Economic Corridor, which um, will take another hour, hour of its own. So I think what we have here today um, is just three task force of the 12th one. So we have um, 12. We just listened to only three of them a quarter. So we have seen a lot of projects already, a lot of initiative. So I remember that on the day that um, the whole committee meet with the Prime Minister, we use almost half a day. And then um, um, it's very, very fruitful. Uh, anyone from the floor have, um, have questions? If not, um, since we are already 10 minutes um, overboard, um, I would like to um, say a few words before I conclude the the sessions. For me, I think the most important task for Thailand over the next two years is to change ourselves. I think that is the most important thing. We lost 10 years of internal conflict, and that 10 years is very valuable. I think our friend in the neighbor have moved forward in terms of infrastructure building, in terms of new industries. But Thailand has stayed still. So I think these two years is the window where Thailand can change ourselves. And in fact, we are so lucky that we have a good partnership with the private sector who come and work together and identify exactly where can we change. And we use this opportunity to change the law, to change the regulation implement the right policy, put in the right framework, put in the new infrastructure projects. And I think this is exactly the two years that when investors look back 10 years from now, we will think this is the two year of turning point for Thailand. I think this is the two year where we lay the right foundation in terms of infrastructure, in terms of innovation, in terms of new industry, and also in terms of public-private people partnership. And this public-private uh, people partnership will not only about 
competitiveness, but it's also about creating a more harmonious society, which is very important for all the private sector and also important for the investor. I mean, how can you invest in the society where the people fighting with each other? I mean, go back to America and look. This is exactly the movement has been going on at this point in time. 99% say that we didn't get the right share fare of the benefit of the growth. And that's exactly why the PPPP initiative is working on. It might look as if we're spending time from our task that to make money for the investor. <laughs> but in fact, this is the money we will make for you in the long run. And I think um, we're quite very fortunate to have a lot of our business leader in Thailand devoted, devoted their time for these projects. And I'm very confident that with their contributions and everyone's contribution, Thailand will have a great future. And please join me to give these two speakers um, an applause. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Isla Wong Kusonkit, Mr. Gan Dragunhun, and Dr. Gopsak Putragun for this very insightful and interesting session. And today's seminar has come to an end. Thank you so much for joining. And tomorrow, there's still a lot of seminars lining up for tomorrow conference. So have a great evening, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you. Kapkun, Sawadee Kha.